ذلت وعلى الصعبة فذلت وعلى ماء السماء فسكبت وعلى ماء السحاب فأمطرت وأسألك بما سألك به سيدنا محمد نبيك وأسألك بما سألك به سيدنا آدم نبيك وأسألك بما سألك به أنبياءك ورسلك وملائكتك المقربون صلى الله عليهم أجمعين وأسألك بما سألك به أهل طاعتك أجمعين أن تصلي على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد عدد ما خلقت من قبل أن تكون السماء مبنية والأرض مطحية والجبال مرسية والعيون منفجرة Âl-i Esbacı, Tahir-i Tevrazi Resulü'ne sahab yüzün efendilerimizin sayrı emmiyen ve zurufin hazırlatan erva şereflerine Pirimiz bile Allah'a müşir Allah'a 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 Efendimizin ve alel husus bu caminin bayinisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezzin kayımlarının ve kahve ehli ivan nervanı için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Yavuzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Minnallaha ve melâketehu yusallun alen nebi Ya eyyüellezine amenu sallu aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Allah ekber Allah ekber Allah ekber Allah ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en Muhammed al Rasulullah Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Nehmedullahi teala ve neğsafiru ve neşhedu en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve neşhedu enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvaci ve sahbihi. Hulefe Reşim Mahdi bin Ba'di ve Zirem ile tahkik, khususen mizallemeti Hulefe Resul ile tahkik, Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Abu Bakr, Umar Osman ve Ali ve Allah bakıya sahabe tabi'in, Ridvanullah Ta'ala aleyhim ecma'in. Ya yuhal mu'min al-hazirun, itakullah Ta'ala ve tehu inma al-lazina tak wal lazina hum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve salamu ala ashrafil anbiya ve mal mursalin, sayyidina ve allani Muhammedin ve la alihi ve sahbihi ve sallim. All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord of the worlds. All praises are due to Him who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between. All praises are due to He who is the most forgiving, most merciful. All praises are due to Him who has written on His throne, My mercy. Blessings be upon the most honored one in the divine presence. The seal of the prophets, 
the Sultan of the Messengers, the mercy to all the worlds, our beloved Master Muhammad wasalam, and upon his blessed family and noble companions. Ayyuhal Mu'minun, O believers, we are in the middle of the most holy days of the first month of the Islamic New Year, the holy month of Muharram. The Holy Prophet wasalam, said in his Hadith Sharif, the best of fasts after the month of Ramadan are in the month of Allah, which you call Muharram. Believers must be running to show the importance and respect to these holy days and holy nights, to increase in their fasting, in their worship, in their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the believers are those ones who are always thinking and reflecting on the signs of their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believers are not those ones who think and reflect according to their own opinions, their own ego, their own ideas, or their own intelligence. So many are taking this ayat nowadays and twisting it only for the sake of their ego, coming up with new ideas that Allah and His Prophet had never put, that never for 1400 years Muslims, scholars and saints they have ever put. But now in these days of Dajjal, taking this ayat and saying, Allah is saying for us to think and reflect. So we must come up with new ideas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Surah Al-Imran, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of night and day, there are signs for people of intelligence. Those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and lying on their sides. It is clear from this ayat, that those who think and reflect from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those ones who are in constant remembrance of Him, those who are making zikr. Not those who are running away from the remembrance of Allah or the remembrance of the lifestyle of the Prophet ﷺ. Those ones may think and they may reflect, but they are doing it according to their shaitan, not according to Rahman. And amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are these holy days and holy nights that yet given to the children of Adam. These holy days and holy nights, they are a time to sit down and reflect for man to come back to himself and to understand what he is doing and what kind of servant he is being to his Lord. In these holy days of Muharram, the months of Allah are 12. And one of the signs that a nation has deviated from the real teachings of what Allah has sent is when they start to play with their calendar. They start to play with time. They start to play with the months. The months of Allah are 12. It has always been, it is, and it was always will be. Don't think that the months of Allah that are 12 in the Islamic calendar is something that some people just make up 1,000 years ago or 1,400 years ago or 800 years ago. The month of Muharram, continuing until the month of Zul Hijjah, the first and the last 12 months, it has always been sacred and holy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning of time, from pre-eternity. The month of Muharram, it has always been sacred and holy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from pre-eternity. It has been sacred during the time of Adam alayhi salam. It is sacred and holy in the time of Nuh alayhi salam. In the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the time of Isa alayhi salam. In the time of our holy prophet alayhi salatu wasalam until judgment day. And we are the nation of witnesses. Because we are witnessing to the original teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given to the earlier nations and their prophets that the earlier nations, they have forsaken, they have betrayed and they have left. And we are the nation to witness that we are continuing this ancient and natural tradition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put from the beginning. 
the holy days and nights, they are connected to the history of mankind, especially in this month. The Qurban that we had just passed, it is connected to the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that he sacrificed his son Ismail alayhi salam. The Bani Israel, they are forsaken this. They are no longer remembering that event. And we, the nation of the last prophet, are the only ones who is continuing that event that happened more than 4,000 years ago. Laylatul Miraj is connected to the ascension of the Holy Prophet And the sign of the Munafiq, the sign of people who have deviated from the way, is for them to say, this day of ascension, this day of Miraj, it is not important in the history of Islam. They forsake that remembrance, that celebration, and they say, no, Bayram celebration is only two. They are reminding us these events of the great tests that the beloved prophets and friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they went through to teach us, to prepare us, to make us to walk on this road to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way of the prophets. Inshallah Rahman, in a few days we will be entering into one of these great holy days. We will be entering into that holy day of Ashura. This day that we are approaching, it is one of the most beloved days of the year to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That even if the majority of the Muslims, they are not observing this day, that this day, maybe some are saying, if you celebrate, then you are Shia. That they say there is no place in the Ahli Sunnah traditions. They are wrong. Ashura has been celebrated before there was a Shia. It has been celebrated during the time of the Prophet ﷺ by those ones, yes, who are called Ahli Sunnah. Because they are the ones who walk in the traditions of the Sunnah of the Rasulullah ﷺ. It has continued from that time until now. And because of the confusion of the Ahir Zaman, any mention of celebrating or remembering the day of Ashura, they say this is a deviation from Islam. This is one of the tricks and the traps of Dajjal in these last days for the believers. And the believers, we must wake up. The Sahabai Kiram said to the Holy Prophet, والسلام, Ya Rasulullah, it would seem that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given preference to the day of Ashura over all the other days. And Holy Prophet والسلام, said, Yes, He has. Allah has given preference of the day of Ashura over all the other days. He explained, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens on the day of Ashura. He created the mountains on the day of Ashura. He created the oceans on the day of Ashura. He created the pen on the day of Ashura. He created the tablet on the day of Ashura. He created Adam alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, and he caused him to enter the gardens of paradise on the day of Ashura. Ibrahim alayhi salam was born on the day of Ashura, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from the fire on the day of Ashura. He caused Fir'aun to drown on the day of Ashura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured Ayub alayhi salam from his trials and tests on the day of Ashura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the tawbah of Adam alayhi salam on the day of Ashura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the prayer of Daud alayhi salam on the day of Ashura. Isa alayhi salam was born on the day of Ashura and the day of resurrection will happen on the day of Ashura. Look at the greatness of this day. And how many believers in these days are going to celebrate this? This is one of the forgotten sunnats of the Prophet ﷺ that we must revive. There are those stubborn, square head, empty head ones who are starting to doubt and deny so many traditions of the Prophet ﷺ based on their ego, based on non-intelligence, based on no knowledge. But rest assured, we must be confident 
that the celebration of Ashura has continued from the time of the Prophet والسلام, continuously for 1300 years as an ummah, as a nation and is supported by countless scholars and countless saints and countless salihins. If you think it is Ahir Zaman, surrounded by kufr in the age of Dajjal, you know better than these countless saints and scholars, then we say good luck to you. That means that your ego has completely reached up to Sidrat al-Muntaha and you're not going to listen to anything. And you consider yourself better than anyone else. Better than the Sahabi Kiram. Better than Salaf al-Salihin. Better than Tabi'in. Better than Tabi Tabi'in. Because it is enough for the believer who is using his intelligence. He sees that on his day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his mercy. So we must ask ourselves, are we preparing ourselves to ask and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy in these days? Or are we going to just let them pass like a routine, living our own robotic lifestyle? These are the days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending rahmat and forgiveness from the skies and from the earth. These are the days that the prophets, they were blessed and they were forgiven. And those who are in the way of the prophets, they are going to take this day and they are going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness for them and for this nation, not to let it pass. We are the weak children of the Adam, of the Ahir Zaman. We do not have the luxury of letting these days to go without running to seek the forgiveness and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believers must show the respect for the day of Ashura so that we may attain the mercy of Allah, attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat ibn Abbas radiallahu an related that the Holy Prophet والسلام, said, if someone fasts on the day of Ashura, Allah will record in his favor the ibadat of 60 years devoted to fasting by day and keeping vigil, staying up all night to worship by night. If someone fasts on the day of Ashura, he will be granted the spiritual reward of 1,000 martyrs, of 1,000 Shahid. If someone fasts on the day of Ashura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record in his credit column all the rewards of the inhabitants of the seven heavens. If we lose this day of Ashura, if we do not prepare for it, if we let it pass empty, we are the ones who are going to lose, not Allah, not his prophet, not the beloved ones. Holy Prophet والسلام, said, if one becomes worried, he hurries up. And if he hurries up, he reaches his destination sooner. As believers, we must be worried about our death, about our grave, and about our standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on judgment day. Don't be worried about this life and its treasures. Worry about our safety of the next life. And in this day of Ashura, we remember one of the sultans of the next life, the grandson of the Holy Prophet والسلام, whose sacrifice has written his names and the names of his companions in golden letters in this world and the next. Hazrat Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu an. On the day of Ashura, more than 1400 years ago, he went to Karbala his life. He sacrificed his life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O believers, Hazrat Hussein on this day of Ashura in the fields of Karbala, he set an example for all those who claim to be servants of Allah until the last day. And on that day of Ashura, the division came between those who are Husseini and those who are Yazidis. And that division in reality came from the beginning of the world until the end. The side of Adam alayhi salam and the side of Shaitan. The side of Habil and the side of Kabil. The side of Ibrahim 
alayhi salam and the side of Nimrud, the side of Musa alayhi salam and the side of Firaun, the side of Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and the side of Abu Jahil and the enemies of Islam. O oh, believers, the time of Husseinis and Yazidis did not end in the fields of Karbala. It continues until today. We must ask, which side are we on? In this day of Ashura that is coming, we have to ask ourselves, whose side am I on? Would I really be with Hazrat Hussein? Or would I have abandoned him in the darkness of night? And in this time, the world is dividing again between the side of Mahdi salam and the side of Dajjal. On the day of Ashura, we must sit and sincerely ask ourselves, whose side are we on? Who are we working for? And that answer, if we are sincere, will come to our heart. And when that answer comes in that day of Ashura, in these holy days of Muharram, sit and make sajda and beg our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His forgiveness and tawbah. And beg to be on the side of Haq, to be on the side of Hazrat Hussein, on the side of Mahdi alayhi salam, on the side of our Shaykh in these days that are coming. Because if we are on the wrong side, we will burn with regret, this life and the next. And the only way to be on the right side is to hang on tightly to that urwati wulqa, to that firm handhold, so that he may lead us to the right way. For this jamaat, we must hang on tightly to Sahib al Saif and his way, the way of Sultan al Awliya. Shay Mawlana Muhammad Nazim al Haqqani. No matter what, you will be on the side of Hazrat Hussein and Hazrat Mahdi. Let go, and there is no help. Not in this life, and not in the next. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Nazim al Nazim. La ilaha illa wa al-hayyul qayyim wa atubu lay. Tabatan abdin zam zam shura Allah madar. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ذلك كل شيء كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ذلك كل شيء كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ذلك كل شيء كبير لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحان إن كنت من الظالمين صبوا إن كنت سن ربنا رب الملائكة وروا صبوا إن كنت سن ربنا رب الملائكة وروا صبوا إن كنت سن ربنا رب الملائكة وروا إن دين إن الله الإسلام
ki nakhuna. Neyir? Eûzu billâhi mineşşeytânirracîm. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Destur madadi sâdet sâyeşerin kıbsi râbâni madad. Nâvet var beynâ tuzlan ki halvan dürriyelimiz. Hasbinallah. Havla ve la kuvvete illa billâhi 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 illa Gregory, Magary calendar, Julian, Mulian calendar, whatever calendar, it is not the calendar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put since the beginning of time until eternity. Yes. Time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by time, isn't it? But Muslims are not thinking about time. Don't go so high to think about what is the meaning? Put 24 hours of your life in front of you to say, this is the time that I have. 24 hours, there are 24 drawers. What are we filling these 24 drawers with? Are we pulling, putting jewels and treasures into these drawers? Or are we putting snakes and scorpions Whatever we put in these drawers, Maghrib time enters, the day finishes, new day begins, angels put a seal on it, never it, it's going to be open until judgment day. Judgment day comes, you're going to open that drawer and you will see what you have put. Believers must think and reflect on the time that is given to him. And what he's spending it with. Don't go too deep into awareness of time. Mm. Principles of Nakshibendi order. You forget what you ate for breakfast. Because there is no awareness. Why is there no awareness? You know the animals. Everything in creation is making zikr of Allah. The animals, they're making zikr. The fish in the ocean, they're making zikr. You know those animals that are caught? You know those fish that are caught? You know why they are caught? Because for that split second, they became gaflat because they forget to remember Allah. That's why they are caught by the predator. Sahib al-Sahib is relating us this, teaching us this. So, when man is in gaflat, when man is not remembering his Lord, that time the ego jumps and catches us. Shaitan jumps and catches us. Because Man is not aware of his surroundings, not aware of his time, not aware of his breath, and not using it for the sake of Allah. Khutbah is just mentioning that ayat. Those who think and reflect, people who think and reflect, not your idea of what thinking and reflect is. So many coming to Darga, mashallah, become awliya. They just come to Darga to make zikr. Now is the time for me to think and reflect. If you're not thinking and reflecting in your own homes, if you're not thinking and reflecting in your work, in your own daily lives, thinking, everything must remind you of Allah. And that time you're just coming to the darga instead of moving to make hizmat so that you have more opening, you're just coming to just sit and to make a zikr. Nothing will open to you. Because the thinking and the reflecting it is not to think like this and to reflect like this. People we've seen coming, thinking about ayat, reflecting. No, no, no. Thinking and reflecting in Islam, it is not to sit somewhere 
quiet, especially during the daytime, long hours, and just stare into space and let your higher imagination to come. No. It comes, thinking and reflecting comes when you are being awake. The thinking must make you to become more awake, aware, to understand. They say, well, Sufi is the child of the time, isn't it? Child of the present. So many of you, you know this. A child of the present. You don't even know who is left and who is in front of you, who is on your right. You're staying together, living together, eating together, sleeping and praying together. You don't even know the routine work that you have to do. Because you're in ghaflat 24 hours. Because you're not thinking when you're doing your work. That's why we're looking at the work that you're doing. It is falling too. You're not thinking. You're not reflecting. You're not being awake and aware. Those who sit and they reflect and they think. They do that because of what? Because they remember their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They remember, meaning they're doing their work, knowing that Allah is watching, and they must do the best. Because Allah is watching, they must do the best. Isn't that what Shaykh Effendi is teaching us? We are doing, if Shaykh Effendi comes, everyone is more awake, isn't it? Because why? Shaykh Effendi is watching. That's why having a shah is to teach you taqwa, to teach you submission, to teach you iman, to teach you Islam, to teach you ihsan. If you don't have a guide, your iman, Islam and ihsan is according to books, according to internet, according to your own egoistic ideas and opinions, nothing else. <coughs> it is not according to the received teachings of the awliya that they've received from their grand sheikh from their grand sheikh, from their grand sheikh, from tabi, tabi'in, from tabi'in, from companion, from the Prophet wasalam. We must think and we must reflect. We must be awake. We must be aware. That time, shaitan will not trick us. We do that Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us, Prophet is watching us, and our Shaykh is watching us, putting fear into our hearts, and with that fear comes the love in our hearts. So that we want to do things only for the best, for the pleasure of Allah. Not for each other, not for your father, not for your mother, not for your wife, not for your husband, not for your children. Some, they're doing things. For the house. Starting to worship the house. Some I met. Oh you must come to my house. It's a beautiful house. It's a beautiful. So nice the house. I said okay inshallah. Five minutes later. Oh you must come to my house. You must come to my house. You're going to leave your house. When you die. You're going to leave your father and your mother when you die. You're going to leave all your friends when you die. You're going to leave everything. That you possess when you die. What you're going to take with you is what you fill those drawers. Those 24 drawers. What you're filling it with is what you're going to take. Then in that grave you're going to understand. That grave is a taste of the hereafter life. It is a waiting station. Either you're going to be in the VIP lounge. Chef and he's saying, I like that. VIP lounge. Or you're going to stay standing up for hours. And you have... People interrogating you, asking you every question, making it very uncomfortable for you. We must concentrate on this in this new year. Not to let our time to be wasted. Not to let our days and our weeks and our months to be wasted. To fill it up with good things. To fill it up with worship and to fill it up with hizmat. To fill it up with more wakefulness. To listen. Not to go to sleep. So many people listen. It looks like they're listening. But they're only listening to the sounds that they are making to themselves. They're not listening to the sounds that is coming. When we speak, they already made up their mind. 
You're hearing something else. Because the ego is whispering something, because you're letting the ego, you empty yourself, you listen. Respond according to the situation. Don't put extra, don't put less, according to the situation. We ask one question, yes or no, they give so many answers. That means there's no clarity there. So when situation, wrong situation happens, instead of being clear and honest and knowing how, what the problem is and how to solve the problem, it just comes up with a lot of excuses and the problems from one problem, it multiplies to two, from two to four, from four to sixteen, going on and on. Because you're not being honest and sincere enough. And you are not being clear enough to attack it from its roots. We are here to learn these things. We are here to understand that the ego always tries to make everything to be so complicated, to be so complex. Oh, it's so many problems. Everything is interconnected. No. Ego is the simplest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Why is it so simple? Because it's been created and the nature of the ego is just to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. And if you are sincere and you know your ego, you're now going to disobey your ego and you're going to obey the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Holy Prophet والسلام, Sultan al Awliya and Sahib al Saif and raise the station higher and higher and make us to be those ones who are forgiven and shown mercy on these days. We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their sakes not to open our mistakes to near our akhirat, to make us to become better ones, to look at our sincerity instead of looking at our deeds or looking at our sins. May we have more sincerity, inshallah, Rahman, for the sake of this holy month, Al Fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. If you have questions, ask. If you have something to bring, bring. Sit, sit. Say. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I heard in the preparation of Muharram questions and answers that during the ghusl one should shave and you point it toward your head. Does this mean one should shave their head every Juma? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Preparation for the Juma, it is very, very, very important. It is one of the forgotten sunnats also in these days. Why? Because Muslims are not celebrating Juma. Juma has become an inconvenience that they just slip in during the lunch time to enter into a masjid like a thief and to exit like a thief. That the Imam is going to stand there 90% of the time giving a khutbah about collecting money. Jamaat is going to sleep or looking at the watch to say this Imam is talking so much. Time is ticking, I'm wasting my, my time and I'm wasting money. Forget about the Juma that began from Thursday night. In the Juma time itself for the prayer, they come last minute, not listening to khutbah, coming in to just pray and then to leave. Tell me this is not the reality. But the Juma time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the gift of Juma to this nation. And the Juma is one of the holiest times. It is more holy than the two Eids, two Bairams that are combined. That the night of the Juma, Thursday night, it is so holy. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He comes down to the th uh, third level, first level, whatever, it doesn't matter, He comes down every night and asking for those ones who are asking for Him. What about the night of Juma? There's so many hadiths, so many traditions. That is why in tariqats we are holding the night of Juma, holy night, for us to have the zikr. So preparation for Juma now, so many millions of Muslims, they drop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the mercy and the blessings for say a billion, two billion Muslims, but only a handful, they're keeping the sunnat of the Juma, preparation for the Juma. They get the rewards of these two billion. Allah is kareem, whatever he has sent is not going to take back. And one of the sunnat of preparation for the Juma is to take a ghusl. 
take a ghusl and to clean yourself. I'm not going to go into detail what it is. Very easy for you to find out. Yes. And for the Juma time, those who are able, is a big blessing and a big <coughs> sunnah to shave your head. For the men, of course. We're not saying for the woman to shave their head. You have to make everything be so specific now. Some crazy women, they're taking it and they're saying, we want to be like the men too. Huh, shave your head. You want to be like men? Shave your head and grow a beard. With the hijab you wear and put another hijab on. I never hear women complaining, why are Allah not giving us beard? Uh, they're very slick. They know they only take what they want to take. For the men to shave their beard. I'm not going to go into detail. What is it that you have to do? You have to cut your nails. You have to do this. You have to do that. You can find it out very easily. Now, for a believer, he will approach the holy days and holy nights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, saying that these are holy days and holy nights. I'm going to do the same, if not more. So, Muharram Ashura, Laylatul Barat, Laylatul Mi'raj, so many other nights and days, holy days, he's going to treat it today. It's a holy day. It's a celebration day. It is a sacred day. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take a ghusl. I'm going to shave my head. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then there are other uh, sunnats that during the time of, especially the time of Muharram and the time of Ashura that you do, that is connected to that. You may find out very easily these things too. Everybody knows how to check their iPhones and everything for nonsense stuff. But looking for the things for the sake of religion, you must look for that too. Giving of a sadaqah, feeding other people, visiting a sick person, patting the head of an orphan, so many other things that is connected to preparation of the Muharram. That if you just sit and you reflect and you think, you say, okay, why not if I do this once a month? Why not if I do this once a week on the day of Jummah? Then that time you get so much blessings and rewards, yes. Not by reading so much, not by memorizing so much, not by trying to understand you are doing it. These are good things to do. But these Wahhabi shaitans, they're stopping people from doing all these things, saying, no, 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 don't take the hadith that says about that, that hadith is weak. So you don't have to do it. No, don't do this. No, don't do that. Everything, they're stopping now. So now your Islam becomes dry. It has no taste. And pretty soon, you become angry. You become violent people. Because it's not filled with the love of the Rahmatul Alameen. It just becomes something uh, that you are doing because you're forced to do. Man's nature, you cannot force him. Once you force him, he becomes upset. He becomes angry. So, Inshallah Rahman with the Muharram uh, and the Ashura that is coming, so many other things that you need to prepare. Maybe there are special prayers that you're going to do. Maybe there are special duas that you're going to do. There's fasting, there is some namaz, there is some recitation. If you're able to do it, good. If you say this is too much, just sit somewhere and take your tesbih. And say, I'm just going to recite La ilaha illallah. Just La ilaha illallah. That is enough these days. Say, I'm going to recite Astaghfirullah alazim wa atubu Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Sincerely, Astaghfirullah, Ya Rabbi. And you sit and you think. You're saying Astaghfirullah because you're remembering you did this wrong. Astaghfirullah. You did another thing wrong. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. You're busy with the mistakes that you have done asking Allah to forgive you. Not just saying Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. We're in gaflat. You're going to sit, today I did this, yesterday, last month, last year, 10 years ago, I did this, so many wrong things. Say, Astaghfirullah, Ya Rabbi, Astaghfirullah. That Astaghfirullah becomes valuable that time. So, Inshallah Rahman, we may speak more about Muharram, about Ashura later. This is a very special time, like what the khutbah is speaking about. Inshallah, we keep it holy, that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give value to us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Should one recite Fatiha three times in the morning and three times at night to protect from the evil eye? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, 
It is not just by recitation that you are going to protect yourself against the evil eye. What is the evil eye? How do you attract the evil eye? How do you dispel the evil eye? These are more important questions. Nazar, Nazar, it is a reality. It is a reality that people give you Nazar. It is a reality that other ones can give you Nazar. It is a reality that Nazar can kill you. It is a reality that, that Nazar, the person who gives you Nazar, he may not even know that he's giving Nazar to you. These things you have to understand before saying, do I have to do this or do I have to do that to protect myself? And what are the things that you are doing to attract, to pull the Nazar? That's why so much Nazar on the women. They are filled with Nazar, filled with wrong things, filled with shaitans, because they refuse to put on the hijab in these days. Or they refuse to put on the hijab with a modesty. With the hijab, they're pushing themselves out more to show to people. That is not hijab. Fashion, Islamic fashion, wearing hijab and walking on the runaway. And all these old women watching and clapping their hands and saying, we want to be like that, starting to put paint on their face and starting to wear tight clothes. They say, I'm keeping hijab because I'm wearing the hijab. No, it is not. That's why we are protecting our women. They say, don't put them out. Because the evil eye is on them. And especially the woman, shaitan runs to them. More than they go to the men's. We're saying this openly. Holy Prophet is saying, no? When the man goes out, seven shaitans is waiting for him. When the woman goes out, how many shaitans? Huh? Seventy shaitans. Seven hundred. Seven thousand. It may increase. The idea is, man goes out, shaitan comes to him differently. Women, they expose themselves Shaitan comes to them multiplied. And there are certain times in a woman's month, she is more open to this. I'm speaking openly now. Don't say, oh, this is my special time. It is not so special. If it's so special, permission is given for you to make more prayers that time. It becomes a holy. It is not holy. You cannot even pray. You cannot do so many things, isn't it? You pull back. So, Holy Prophet said, when you look at the full moon, the moon is round and perfect and beautiful, say, MashaAllah. Say, MashaAllah. Say, MashaAllah. Because the moon gets affected by the nazar of those who see it and start to praise it without saying, Masha Allah. And now, women, they're putting their pictures on Facebook and everything. Oh, so beautiful. Nobody's saying, Masha Allah. And if you understand the nazar also, you're not going to put that. So we don't put up pictures of our women everywhere. I don't care what other kinds of jamaats they're showing. Up to them. They're right, maybe. It's not in our way. If the moon gets affected by that, what about us? You know why? It affects us more. Because the moon has not been created to represent Allah. We have been created to represent Allah. Shaitan is not the enemy of the moon. Shaitan is our enemy. That there are shaitans of the ins and the jinns that are always around to put the nazar on us. But men and women going out, doing things, not understanding. Entering into this world thinking it's a shiny new world, but it is actually like a jungle where there are creatures, dangerous wild creatures waiting to jump on them. Especially for people who like to praise themselves. More nazar on them. Don't. When you praise each other, when you see something, you say, MashaAllah. Oh, you look very good today, MashaAllah. The person says, MashaAllah. 
you invoke in the name of Allah. You say, Allah has willed it. Isn't that what mashallah is? Allah is the one that wills it. Not us, not you, not Allah. So there is a protection there. You're not going to go out to expose yourself. You're not going to go to dangerous places. You're not going to attract attention. Believer does not go out to attract the attention. He pulls himself back. You want to attract attention? There are certain times of the year to attract attention, maybe. Yes. Maybe we have a celebration of Eid. That time we make a show. It's okay. MashaAllah. While we're doing it, to show Islam, to show the haybat of Islam, and how Islam is celebrating Eid. For example, here, everyone's wearing nice, beautiful clothes because we feel happy. We don't save our money to buy beautiful clothes for Christmas or New Year or Thanksgiving or all these other kafir, unbeliever festivals. But we are reserving it for holy days and holy nights. This is nothing new. This has been practiced for 1300 years. Except for the last hundred years, people are veering towards lifestyle of unbelievers. So we must show now that time. We are showing to ourselves. We are saying we don't need to follow them. We have our own traditions. Eid coming. So many Muslims are not celebrating it too. They buy a nice suit and tie for Eid. They go pray namaz. And then they go out and have fun. So there's no different from any other day. But for New Year, for Christmas, everyone is celebrating. You're putting Christmas tree inside their house. Allah Allah. So, first step to say to pull yourself out from other people's eyes. Don't attract the eyes. Number two, the same mashallah. Number three, be with the salihin. Have a sheikh. That time the sheikh will be able to put more protection on you and be able to say things that's going to give you more protection. It's necessary. So all many things we can say how to protect you from evil eye. But who is going to carry it? These are simple things. Keep your wudu. How many Muslims are doing that? They say, no, no, wudu is only for praying. Good. So when angel of death comes to take, a, take you without a wudu, you're in big trouble now. Because you are in dirtiness. I have a wudu. So many hadiths explaining the virtues of a wudu. Give sadaqah every day. Give gifts to each other. So many other things, inshallah, Rahman. But just association with a sheikh, with a salihin, you'll be able to understand, inshallah. Good luck to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ashka. Is it permissible for a woman to ride on a two wheeler vehicle? Two wheeler vehicle? Like what? Motorcycle? Or bicycle? Sit home. No need to take bicycle. Riding a bike. Now what? You want me to be like Saudi Arabia? They're saying woman cannot drive, now woman cannot ride bicycle. What a woman is going to do with that? <laughs> okay, in so many other places, they are tight and there's uh, India. So they're not saying to say so much. But here in America, why you want to ride? Why are you a hipster? You want to ride bicycle? Huh? No need. Not necessary. You see, we have lost modesty. It is not modest for women to do that. A hundred years ago, even the kafirs, they understand higher modesty. You know that? Why? Because when they're riding the horse, the kafirs, they say women should not ride a horse like a man. They'd go side saddle. They sit on their side and they ride a horse. That's how women should be riding. Kafirs are saying not to write like this, like a man, something in between there. No. So, now, oh, they're going to need proof. They say, where in the Quran is saying now, you cannot write. 
They say, okay, very good. Where in the Quran it says you exist? Where? So you don't exist. So, not really necessary, no need to do it. You have a car, drive a car. For uh, emergency, for important things to do it. Not to take the car to go shopping now, to go to shopping mall and have tea and coffee and ice creams with people. That's also in our Jamaat, we're not doing that. Go what is necessary and you get to come back. That's all. Safety reaching. He said the days of that job. There are eyes everywhere. Be very careful for you and for me. Assalamu alaikum. Afir also, drink your tea, except for Bayram. How does a person deal with responsibility when he or she feels they cannot cope with what they already have? Speak to your share. Specifically, this is a very general question for you. You need to speak to your share and explain what is your responsibility. What is it that you are doing? What is your job? At that time, you may give something according to what is your need. Because so many people, they're not understanding what is necessity, what is need, and what is a desire, what they want. So many people start to think, this is my responsibility. Maybe it's not your responsibility. So many people say, I have to work, I have to feed my family. MashaAllah, it's as if the family is starving and you're going like 100 years ago to, un to buy bread. Evening time, family is starving, the father comes home and brings bread and meat and the mother cooks. No. So when you're saying I have to feed my family, feeding family means everyone has iPhone. When the kid wants a new pair of shoes every month, the father has to give, isn't it? Especially in America, you become very spoiled. You don't know what is responsibility, you don't know what is important, and you don't know what is not important, what is wasting. But your own specific situation, speak. Whether it's responsibility, dunya-wise, or responsibility towards people, or responsibility towards Allah and His Prophet. And that shaykh is going to first concentrate on the responsibilities that you have towards your Lord and your Prophet. If you fulfill those responsibilities, everything else will become easy and blessed for you. If you are looking to fulfill every responsibility, but not the rights of your Lord, your Creator and your Prophet, then you can earn the whole world. Like they say, your two colors are not going to meet. Never are you going to have satisfaction and peace doing it. May Allah make it easy for you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Last question. Were Krishna and Buddha prophets sent by Allah? Did they warn about idolatry explicitly? Okay. We're not going to enter that topic now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent 124,000 prophets to every nation who have sent a prophet. And either the nation is going to reject the ways of the prophet after they pass, or they're going to make their prophets to become deities. To become objects of worship, to become lords. So, if Krishna, Buddha, whoever it is, they were prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, they brought only Tawhid. They brought only the knowledge of how to return to their Lord. They brought only Islam, which means what? Submission to Allah. And they will warn the nation how not to worship other idols, other ilas, except for Allah. And they are going to tell their nation to stay away from the tricks and traps of this dunya. And they are going to warn the nation what is going to happen in the Ahir Zaman. So, so many religions, it speaks about maybe 50, 60, 70 percent of what we talked about, isn't it? How to return to their Lord. How to watch out for the tricks and traps of this dunya and the ego. Ahir Zaman. But the most important things, the Aman to Billahi. 
wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi all those principles of the faith the aqidah it is crooked Isa alayhi salam was a prophet sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every prophet also spoke about the coming of the last prophet alayhi salatu wasalam so and Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam but they took Isa alayhi salam who is a prophet who is a man to be a god 2 billion 3 billion 5 billion doesn't matter if there's 7 billion 100 billion Christian saying that it doesn't change the reality he was not god he was not a creator he was a creature he was a prophet doesn't matter if there's 1 billion muslims or 100 or 1 the truth still stays there hak is hak and batil is batil so did they warn about idolatry yes they did even now with all the corruption that has happened you may look into their books properly to find don't be busy with that so much too don't be busy with that you don't invite people to the truth by fighting with them don't have debates that is not the way of allah and his prophet there's not the way of the sahaba kiram there's not the way of the awliya allah to debate they live the sunnah and they show it they have the light of the prophet lay sat was salam and they show it and if people like they say what i have is not complete you have the complete light let me have it from you they say now welcome to the door of islam enter don't get into the trick don't be fooled by shaitan and dajjal in these days just to be studying different religions and take their books and their verses to fight against them and to show them that they are wrong this is bad manners it is bad adab this is not sunnah this is not the sunnah of the awliya allah not the sunnah of the rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam and it doesn't work which man you're going to come you're going to convince him reading an air you say you are wrong because your buddha is saying this is this and he's going to say yes you know what you're right yeah really like this or you're right okay let me say how many maybe thousands that you have said only a handful that they are going to but they became muslim also maybe they come into the truth they understand that their way it is not complete not by the light of the prophet not by taqwa not by your own example of the lifestyle but just by debating by words so next time he's going to hear someone else saying better words but against to islam he's just going to follow him again it is not words it is action ibn abbas radiyallahu an he went to central asia and the people there they're strong worshiping other than allah he did not go there to study their books to sit down and to debate with them to be busy with that he did not he just went carrying the light of the prophet lesa to salam and by his lifestyle people looked and they noticed there is something there there is something pure and holy there is light let me go and take this light and if you look at the history of islam so many areas where islam went and penetrated it is not through debating it is because those ones who are sincere friends of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the others they see and they get attracted don't fight it will never work this is not the way of sahib al saif either if you want to follow your own way if you say this is the way of shaykh mawlana or shaykh mawlana's other khalifas are doing it or this one we say you are free go to their way then but the way of sahib al saif it is not we go people may come from different religions to come and to worship with us you are invited to come and worship there are certain things you want to ask us about our religion we may say 
we will even say, you are wrong. This is what we are believing in. But we say, it is up to you. We are not going to sit down going back and forth now. That is not the way. So if you are following the way of Sahib al Saif, leave this. Because shaitan is making you to be busy with malayani. Malayani. Sit and ask, in all those years that I'm studying all these books and all these verses and all these chapters and all these proofs, how many people did you bring into Islam? And out of these, how many are really sincere? And how many stay? And how many make progress? Yeah. And you're going to understand. Ya Allah. Make us to understand more and to follow our Shaykh better. <coughs> the way of Tariqat is not being busy with that. Tariqat is not also being busy with attacking Wahhabis 24 hours. It is not. In case you forget, Tariqat is to purify yourself. <laughs> it is not to attack the Wahhabis. You may know a couple of things here and there. They say you may say something. But concentrate on the sunnah of the Rasulullah wasallam. That is how you soften their hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And open our way in this new year for us to become better servants. More awake servants, inshallah. To take the nazar away from our community, from our jamaat. To take the fitna away from our hearts and our jamaat. For more opening for us to run in the way of Allah. For us to be strong believers until we die. For the sake of the Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, al-Fatiha. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Have a good day. I will see you inshallah. For Shaykh Effendi's birthday, Mevlut, on Monday, we are having. We may have a mevlut. We are going to have zikr. If you are from other countries watching to know that you are one of the few, maybe the only one in your country that is bringing the light of Sahib al Sayyid there, big blessings coming to you. You are sitting down, you are connecting to us and making the zikr or listening to the sohbah at that time. Big, huge blessings coming to you for you and your family and your ancestors. Because now, the rahmat that is supposed to be for all that country, because one is practicing it, falls to you. And the blessings will spread, inshallah. Rahman. Then the next day, inshallah, Ashura. We will be remembering and commemorating. We may speak more about those matters that time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fatiha. Amin.